Hello, welcome to this session. Today we would be understanding what are crust landforms. Before that, in the previous class we discussed about weathering and erosion. So a recap of what we did previously. So under weathering, we talk about breaking down and disintegration of rock. And under erosion, we talk about transportation of that material that has already been broken down by the process of weathering. Now these two processes, when we specifically talk about erosion, there are various agents of erosion. The primary agents are water, wind, uh, you have ice or glaciers and one of that is groundwater. So under underground, you have groundwater or underground topography if I say. The formation of underground topography is known as cast landforms. Now again, similar to the fluvial landforms or glacial landforms that happen, cast landforms also can be classified as either erosional landforms or depositional landform. As the name suggests, erosional means those which are uh, where the particles are moved away after the weathering and under deposition, it's obvious when the particles are moving, they will tend to deposit somewhere or accumulate somewhere and that would be considered under the process of deposition. So under cast landforms, we'll be talking about erosional depositions and er erosional landforms and depositional landforms. Now, cast, the word originates from cras, that is a plateau in Slovenia and this a uh, word means barren land. Most of the cast features are seen in the areas of Slovenia, Yugoslavia. One of the largest uh, cast topography is found in Mammoth Caves in Kentucky. That is considered as the world's largest uh, cave system or the underground cave system of the world. So you have some of the beautiful landforms from Mammoth Caves. As you can see, you have a river that can be seen here and you have boat tour that are being organized to uh, see the Mammoth Caves. So when we see such interesting topographies, we defini ne definitely develop interest in the subject. And specifically to understand this topic, what we will be doing today is we will be just seeing how the different landforms are performed and based on that we will be understanding the process and the mechanism of formation of cast landforms. So, whole of our study would be uh, part of one of my studies in Oregon caves that I had did in, uh, or in the state of Oregon, US. So, what we would be doing here is as you can see here, this is the entry to a cave and the entry to a cave, you will see some waterfalls here or some water dropping down across the rocks here. So how is a cast landform formed? So that's the first thing, that's the formation that we would be understanding today. When we talk about formation, you have carbon dioxide which reacts with water and this reaction forms carbonic acid. This carbonic acid reacts with calcium carbonate. Now most of the cast topographies as you can see would be formed by limestone. However, some are formed by dolostone. Limestone is a carbonate of calcium while dolostone is a carbonate of magnesium. So more than most around 90% of the landforms that you would be for, for, uh, that you will see that are formed are made of calcium and some of them are however made out of magnesium. So what we would be understanding here is mainly the calcium process. So you have calcium carbonate in the form of calcite. So this carbonic acid when reacts with calcium carbonate forms free ions of calcium and carbonate. And this carbonate is highly reactive in nature. So this carbonate uh, leads to formation of or dissolution of, as you can see, the, uh, the soft rocks here. So what are the reasons for the formation of cast landforms? First is, as you can see, the root of the trees that are fracturing the rocks. So here you, the, you can see the dark zones. These are the roots of the trees that are penetrating into the caves. 
So one of the basic reasons is tree roots that fracture the rock. The next is the joints. When I talk about rock joints, you have the arrangement of rocks and under arrangement of rocks there can be hard rock and a soft rock then again a hard rock so this is a hard rock this is a soft rock and this is again a hard rock say so what would happen is first of all we'll talk about joints so between each of the rocks here you have joints or spaces and these spaces slowly increase or fracture out and these leads to way for the water to run off now the agents can be either water or in cold areas it can be ice so it gives a space to either water or ice and when water and ice runs through it it tries to break it off that is one thing the next thing this soft rock is usually the limestone or the dolo stone as we have seen this dissolves with water and this soft rock is the reason uh, is the region where you have formation of various landforms now i have a simple demonstration here consider this to be a region you have a stream that is coming through here and when the stream is coming through here you have a fracture zone here and since there is a fracture zone what would happen is eventually the stream a stream would disappear in this region so i can say you have a hard rock and a soft rock topography here you have a stream that's coming through this stream disappears in this region and this stream since it is disappearing in this region it would be known as a disappearing stream and the region in which this stream is enclosed is a kind of valley so you have i could say a formation of a mountain here and within this mountain this stream is running since this region is a shape of valley and this stream disappears this valley would be called as a blind valley so now we'll start with the formation of erosional landforms that can happen by the formation of cast topography so erosional landforms the first thing that we talk about is disappearing streams and blind valleys now once there are disappearing streams and blind valleys what would happen this would go into the region of the soft rock and that soft rock will fall down so as you can see in this one of the videos that we have captured you have the top rock that falls down and there is a kind of hole that is developed and this hole is known as sinkhole so i can say this is a formation of a hole and this can be called as a sinkhole now sinkholes can be of various shapes or various types the first one is bowl shaped where the breadth is more than the depth so you have the top region that is more than the depth the next is funnel shaped so on the top it is big and towards the narrow uh, it becomes narrow towards the bottom so that is a shape of a funnel next is you have basin shaped under basin shaped the depth would be more than the diameter the fourth is caldron you will have the length width and depth of the same dimension and finally the last one would be the trench and under trench you will have length greater than the width so these are the basic five types of sinkholes that can be formed now i have one sinkhole here then in the adjoining region i can have another sinkhole then next then next and then next so there can be series of sinkholes so if there are series of sinkholes we call it sinking creek 
very simple you have one sinkhole or one depression that has been formed where there was soft rock so that was sinkhole if there are series of such sinkholes we call it sinking creeks sinkholes can be also called, called as dolines when there are compound sinkholes or i say two or more sinkholes in the same area we call it valas the next is swallow holes when there are two or more sinkholes that combine it forms a very big sinkhole or a very big hole which is known as swallow holes the next is pulch now pulch are the basement areas which have steep sides and flat basins so you have steep sides and flat basins and these are known as pulse so these are some of the very basic erosional landforms now the most important that we have missed out is the formation of a cave now as you can see this is a cave so when you are entering in you have a cave feature here so if i enter into one cave then one cave finishes off and there is next cave the path or the tunnel that connects one cave to the next cave is known as ponors so you have cave you have one cave in which you enter then you have a subsequent cave but between the, these two cave there is a tunnel or a path so you have one cave and then a connecting path and another cave and this connecting link between the two caves are known as ponors now caves can be either vertical or horizontal in nature now when i say the caves are vertical we call it shafts and when i say the caves are horizontal i call it we call it galleries okay so these are some of the primary erosional landforms that you need to know for a cast topography now once you have the erosion process that has taken place what would happen the things that have been eroded will start depositing now it's important to note that erosional and depositional processes are not a one day game this takes place over years and years so once you have erosion you will have deposition now there are various perspectives that deposition starts at the same time when the erosion starts some other might say deposition starts only after erosional process is completed what we have already talked into the cycle of uh, slope evolution so it's similarly uh, similar concepts apply here so the next important concept that we would be understanding is depositional landforms now when you have the calcium carbonate that has been eroded it will deposit out now what can be the primary depositional features the first feature will be drip stone so as you can see in this picture you have small droplets that are falling down from the top and these droplets are dripping down drip means falling slowly or kind of falling at a very slow pace so we call it drip stones now these is drip stones if they appear into a shape of a curtain or a drip we call it drips or curtains the next feature is stalactite now this is something where most of the students get confused stalactite is a formation that happens from the roof top so you have from the top of the roof you will see depositional features and they are very interesting depositional features within the caves and we call it stalactites the next feature however is known as stalagmites so as you can see you have a next feature 
which is coming from the ground and this feature is known as stalagmites now most of the students are confused with these two terminology so the best way i suggest is stalagmite so here what letter comes in is, is g that means it originates from ground and the other will hang over from the roof so stalactite stalagmite originates from ground so you have g here so it comes from ground that's the best way you can remember it so you have stalactite and stalagmites that are the two primary depositions in the cave when there is a deposition from the top and deposition from the bottom at a point what would happen is these depositions will enlarge and that that will meet at a point and within the cave if you are running a straight you might find a pillar in front of you so you might find a pillar in front of you that is due to the coalescence of uh, or collision of the stalactite and stalagmites you have formation of pillars or columns so this is a stalactite and you have a stalagmite here and these two combine to form a pillar so that's one of the next features now what are these these are flower formations we also call these as anthrodites so as you, as you can see on the top you have formation of flowers so this is known as anthrodites or flower formations the next is banana formations of the shape of banana these are not common in all the caves so you have some of the caves which have particularly banana formations now this is an interesting uh, formation this is not from the top but on the ground and we call it as flow stone and this is when the uh, uh, the calcium deposits are flowing as in the formation of in the form of sheets we call it flow stones and this feature can be seen on the ground not on the roof so this is another feature which is known as flow stone and lastly you have an interesting feature that is known as travertines this is due to dissolution of calcium carbonate uh, usually commonly seen where there are regions of hot springs and weak joints so these are some of the depositional landforms in karst topography so what we have covered today are the erosional and the depositional features of karst topography and how karst landforms are formed we'll be covering further uh, types of landforms in the next classes you can subscribe to exam race channel for any further updates stay tuned have a good day ahead